Lou Oatman of Shushan, New York, one of the earliest proponents of designing and tying bucktails and streamers to imitate specific bait fish. Truly a pioneer of our sport, probably most well known for his Shushan Postmaster created in 1953. Born in 1902, but sadly he passed away in his mid-50s and never really received the recognition he deserved during his lifetime. I mean, he was pretty well known on his home waters of the Battenkill, but it wasn't until Joseph Bates published his Streamer Fly Tying and Fishing in 1966 that he really got the recognition he deserved throughout our sport. And Bates really brought some of his streamer patterns to light. Plate 6 of this book features all 17 of the named streamers that we think are attributed to Oatman. And four of the patterns in this plate were actually tied by Oatman. The rest of them were tied by Keith Fulcher. We've talked about him of Thunder Creek fame. Now the one I want to tie for you today is called the Red Horse. And he created this as an imitation of the Red Horse Sucker, which is mostly a Western and Midwestern sucker. So these Oatman patterns, they're not really forgotten flies. I mean, you can find them in books out there. Mike Valla has them in his Founding Flies. But for the most part, they're not really household names. I mean, if you go in any fly shop in the country and ask for a Red Horse, they might not know what you're talking about. But there's some really cool, old school, classic, beautiful streamers that I'm sure are as effective today as they were when they were created in the 50s. So I hope y'all like this one. So there it is in the vise. A pretty classic Lou Oatman streamer. Kind of elegant looking, a little bit flashy. Not a hard tie, though there is, you know, quite a bit going on. I'm going to tie this on a size 6. This is a 6X long limerick bend streamer hook. So let's get that caught in there and straight enough right there. And let's put a base of black thread all the way down to the start of the bend. Now the first thing I'm going to catch in, just some hackle tips for the tail. And this is too red and too yellow. I'm not really worried if it's yellow on the side or the top or the bottom. Uh, just bunching them all together and doing it pretty short about that right there. We're going to have some of this up front to trim in just a second. But, you know, up to you if you want to put a wrap underneath them. It might help keep them from sliding around the hook on you. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now several tight wraps. Now let's go ahead and trim this front. And I'm going to try to get this as, you know, maybe just a little bit of a taper, but pretty short. I think I've nicked my thread right there in the middle, but we're going to be okay right there. We do have a wool body, but we still don't want a big lump right there or it might show on us. So take your thread back up front and let's catch in some silver tinsel. And this is an oval. You could use Legarton. I think Joseph Bates recommended this oval and Mike Valla used a Legarton. So whatever you prefer. I like this and maybe a size smaller than you might think on the size of hook you're using. So this is a small oval tinsel and I think it's going to look better than had I gone to a medium. Okay, let's catch that all the way in then take our thread back up front again. We're going to catch in some white wool yarn. And this is two strands of a four strand yarn. So I'm going to catch it in up front just like I did with this tinsel. Pull it back just a little bit. Maybe I'll trim that front piece in just a second. But I want to keep it along the top. And this is just trying to keep my underbody consistent as I go back. Now let's wrap this white wool up. And with two strands you can kind of treat it as a thread. You can spin it counterclockwise to help it flatten out. Or if you wanted to bit corded up, spin it clockwise, and I don't really care one way or the other how I'm doing it here. I just want it to be kind of a, a smooth body. So go ahead and take it all the way up to our thread. Actually I need to go a little bit farther than I parked the thread, so let's take a couple extra wraps up there. Now we'll catch it off right here. And now I'm going to counter wrap this oval tinsel, oval silver tinsel. And whatever you think looks good, I don't know, this size six, maybe eight or more wraps. Now 
Now let's flip it over and tie in a throat. Just more hackle tips. And this time I'm only gonna use one each, one red and one yellow. The tail we had two each, but I don't wanna overpower it up here. So I think, you know, two total is gonna be fine. Let's see if that's gonna be okay. Yeah, it's coming off the bottom well enough. So let's trim this excess up front. Now this is a part of the fly that probably takes the longest. It's preparing the wing, which is four saddle hackle feathers. And Bates, in his book, he had two olive ones with two done on the outside. And Vala's book, he just had all done. So I think it's your preference what you want to do. So let's get some loose wraps. I'll put a little bit of extra thread out right there and just some loose wraps on it to try and keep that in the plane of the hook. That's a little bit off to the side, but I think we're going to be fine because we're going to build a big head and we're going to put some jungle cock eyes on it. So I'm going to go with that right there. Snip off the tips up here. And then just pull some thread out and work on my head. Try to get this as neat and as clean as you can. And really you can just whip finish it and call it done. But if you do have some jungle cock eyes, yeah, go ahead and put them on there. They do make it look pretty cool. So I've got some here. I'm going to put some on each side and fairly long. I'm going to have that little bit of white showing right there up front. Let's go three wraps to hold that one in. Is that position okay? I think it's fine. Do the same thing on this side. Okay, those are eh, close enough to the same length. That's not perfect, but you know, this is not a shadow box fly. This is actually going to go in my streamer box. Now just spend some time building up your head. Let's do a quick whip finish and see if we have any cleanup here. Now I think we're fine. Just drop a head cement and this thing's ready to fish. But there you go, Lou Oatman's Red Horse. Pretty neat, old school, semi-forgotten streamer. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.